Welcome to the long-awaited couples Q&A. So we asked my Patreon fam for questions and you guys gave us over a hundred questions. Wow. Thank you. We're just gonna go through all of them. If this gets too long, I'll just edit out some of them. But before we get started, this video is very kindly sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. It's where I get all my glasses. So if you see me wearing glasses in my videos, they are from them. I have two new pairs to try and I'm gonna let Chris Pick the pair that I wear in this Easy. video. I'm a man of fine taste. <laughs> if you head over to the glassesusa.com website, you can find thousands of different styles of frames and you can put prescription lenses in both the sunglasses or the regular glasses. There's so many different styles to choose from. I feel like you guys can all find something that you really like. And they also have this really cool AR try-on tool. So you can try the glasses real time on your face before you order them. This is the first pair. Office secretary look. Sure. <laughs> what are your thoughts on these? Um, they look quite Polish. I had a, <laughs> I had a f Polish friend once that wore glasses like these, but okay. they look nice. Thank you. Okay. That's Polish number people one. are very fashionable. And More the, than me. This is option number two. These are Ray-Ban. Wow. These look kind of gold. Are these gold? Gold plated Ray-Ban. It's not real gold. Oh. <laughs> but for the illusion of having gold. I think these are my favorites to be honest. All right, we're gonna go with the Ray-Bans. I will have both these frames linked down below if you're interested in twinning with me. People are like, is Chris afraid to wear glasses and videos? He looks it's just, good in them. It's just I don't feel like they suit me necessarily, as we can see Those here. Those are cute. I look like a professor. Those are cute. An awkward professor. <laughs> All right, moving on to the questions. Our first question <laughs> is from Adrian. Uh, how did the relationship develop? Do you have a hard date for your anniversary or did you both just realize you had been dating after a while? This is probably the top asked question, so I figured we'll start with this one. And the answer is, what's um, the answer? I don't know, we definitely don't have a hard date for our anniversary. Hard date. Because I can't think of a day where either of us was like, will you be my boyfriend? <laughs> will you be my girlfriend? We didn't no. really do that. Okay, I have in my mind what day I think it starts from. It was a Tuesday. I was thinking of the day like when we were hanging out in Tokyo and talking about like shitty relationships we'd had <laughs> and Chris was like, do you think we'd be a good couple? And, uh, yeah. and then I was like, obviously. And then you seemed kind of shocked. Yeah, I was shocked by that. I remember that day well, yeah. Because we were just hanging out as friends and then I, yeah, I did jokingly say like, I wonder if we'd work and then you were like, oh my god, I'm like totally that yes. That's not what I said. And I was like, oh, oh interesting. That's what my recollection But I feel like head. after that, it kind of turned into more of a dating vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we went out for more like one-on-one -on -one dinners and stuff. Mm. So maybe that day. Maybe that day. Maybe that day. But I think it's important to say that, you know, we'd been friends for many years. And in many ways, the thought hadn't crossed my mind. You were just a genuine sort of friend, mm. right? And then there was that, yeah, that one time where we just hit it off, I guess, and it? I, I saw our friendship from a completely different perspective that hadn't dawned mm. on me before. I think it, was, it was quite an odd thing. You find that's quite common with people that are friends and some, like, some suddenly they sort of realise, oh wait I a guess. minute, maybe it could work. I've never really felt like that about... I can't think of another time I felt like that about mm. one of my friends, one of my long-time friends. Mm. Mm. Seemed to have worked. <laughs> Do you recall the time you thought to yourself, I want to marry them? I think after certainly a year, I was like, I mean, this is serious and mm. I was sort of becoming 30 and I feel like <laughs> in a rush to get married I, I think see. Well, I think when you're in a relationship with your late 20s early 30s you, yeah it's definitely the thought crosses your mind but like it was like about a year in and I was like this is good why wouldn't you get married right fair enough yeah <laughs> I don't know if I like that answer what well like if, if we'd been if we dated from like the age of 20 right it'd probably take me longer to get to that point I think because in my well, mind marriage is something that happens when you're like in between like 29 to 33. I don't think it has anything to do with age. I think it's more you have so many experiences with other relationships uh, when you're in your 30s mm. that you kind of know like, oh, this is going to work. You can just tell this is going to work. Yeah. Like right I, off the bat. I feel like after a week I was like, yeah, like I don't think we'll have any issues. Yeah, I felt like that as well. Especially <laughs> after your cooking. <laughs> after I experienced Charles cooking, I was like, yes, let's go. <laughs> Fucking Amazing cook. Steven says, there's something I'm curious about from both of your perspectives. Do you think both being public figures affected how the relationship played out? And if so, how? Did either of you feel you had to think twice about anything you wanted to do or say because of your presence in the public eye? Sometimes. I, would, I, did, I think we didn't hold hands for a long time. No. Public, right? I think like three years. 
tell us one thing about the other that annoys you. Fuck, I don't know. Oh, I can think of one. Go on, man. When you put your socks in the laundry, they're all like balled up. So I need to go through the laundry and like unball all your socks before I wash them. And I've told him this like at least 37 times. Well. Why don't you stop? <laughs> my thing I don't like about Sha is today, just before we record this video, she literally just put some scissors in my hair and cut it. <laughs> and now my coffee has like fucking hair all over it. She was like, your hair is unacceptable. That is and she not got what some I scissors said. and just went snip, 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 snip. You're going to make people think I'm an asshole. <laughs> to be fair, it's the first time she's ever done you that. You told me you weren't happy with how long your hair was. So happy. I said I could cut it for you just, to clear just things up. Just look at me now. Alexa says... <laughs> Can I talk to a hairdresser and he's like, what is happening? <laughs> Alexa says, who made the first move? I don't know, really. <laughs> I would say I made the first move, like, verbally. Verbally. He kissed me first. Yes. But well, I feel like I was the first one to make it clear that I liked you. Yeah, probably. Yeah, no, it was it was probably you that made the first move there. Charlotte, with your love of England, do you think you'll both spend more time in the UK slash make more videos over there? I think, uh, well, that's a question for you, isn't it? We travel to England a lot, so yeah, I'll definitely be making more videos over there. I've been there twice in the last year yeah and uh, I do you know I like the UK I do want to spend more time there but I actually want to spend more time just in Europe as well oh definitely traveling around. Like yeah. I went to Greece last year yeah. briefly it was amazing and I'd love to just go around Europe a lot more this year if possible yeah uh, Switzerland I want to go to Switzerland climb some mountains in Switzerland where's the most romantic place you've gone together in Japan in Japan in romantic Japan. romantic <laughs> I can only really think of maybe that cool onsen we went to in Yamagata our favorite one yeah I mean we yeah we go to an onsen every few months and just yeah. relax there for a day it's nice you know the nice thing about Japan is they're very good at domestic tourism and you can just have these beautiful like your and traditional inns you can go to. Yeah. What's the closest you've come to letting your relationship slip when you were trying to keep it secret? I don't uh, think we ever did. <laughs> Pete did at one Pete. point. Pete said something in a stream. He said something like, what's it like living with a Canadian or something? <laughs> Can't remember, probably. There's been a few slip up. I heard someone on Trash Day slipped up. I don't know if it was Connor or someone. But apparently they cut it out. I don't know. Oh, what did they say? I can't remember. Oh, it, was, no way. it was a couple of That's years funny. back now. Yeah, but, like, honestly, it wasn't like... If somebody said something, it wasn't like a huge deal. We weren't, like, nah. angry at them or anything. Like, we weren't... It wasn't going to be a huge scandal if people found out we were dating. We just weren't really mm. ready to tell everybody yet, so... Laura says, do you ever feel competitive professionally? No, it's quite the opposite, actually. It's been mm. really helpful. Charla has been great with helping with camera work or marketing or like thinking of an idea, you know. If there's ever a really nice that. shot in my video, it was probably him. <laughs> I'm not very good at videography. So actually, it's no, really No, it works good. really well. I'm not like, ah, I've got more subscribers than you. <laughs> Try and beat my friend Sharla in Japan. I think she's got the 16,448th birthday, uh, I think. Um, you know, I can't believe she's 10,000 birthdays more famous than I am. That's ridiculous um, you know just because she she smiles more in her videos <laughs> bitch had you talked about marriage before the proposal or did it come as a complete surprise I think it came as a surprise to you I was surprised oh yeah, yeah we got to talk about that <laughs> idiot well I, I, I you know I kind of knew I was gonna do it over Christmas we went to the UK and uh, I wanted to do it in the Lake District because we've been there before and it's yeah. a beautiful place in North England um, very magical. I want to do it there, but the weather was just utter shit the whole week. For like, yeah, and the not whole like trip. a little bit of rain. We're talking like tornado, <laughs> fucking so end of the world, Noah's Ark rain. I had this ring in my bag, and I was like, "Fuck, when am I going to do this?" <laughs> and then I, I don't know why, over dinner one night. I said to Charlotte, oh, marriage. I, I was like, oh, mislead her so she won't get the hint or anything. I was like, oh, marriage, what a load of rubbish. She wants to get married anyway. We were like, talking about our friends that are married and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was like, oh, marriage, nonsense. Like, oh, that's <laughs> stupid. I don't know why anybody gets married. And then we went we were in the hotel room and uh, Charlotte was like, upset and crying. She was like, we've been dating for many years. Why don't you, don't you want to marry me at all? And I was like, oh, shit. And, and like, he, had to, like, he had to keep up with it because... <laughs> He didn't want to like tell me why he had said that. Yeah. So, and then he just kept digging a hole. I think at one point you were like, well, I just want to make sure I'm sure. And I'm like, <laughs> like almost five fucking years and you're not sure. And the, the ring was like two meters 
from me, and I was like, I could, I was, I was almost laughing. Like we were quite sitting there crying. He laughed at one point, and I'm like, you're such a. C so, you can't say that. I'll beep it. <laughs> it was a massive fight. I think I cried for like three hours because he just kept saying like worse and worse things, and I just felt horrible. Digging the misleading hole. <laughs> but I want to be like, oh my god, the ring's literally just here. Like, I wanted, it would have been kind of like funny in a way to be like, haha, here it is. I was like, but then I, I was like, you can't propose in that kind of environment. <laughs> You can't propose. Couldn't have gotten any amidst nice photos, crying and tears sure. and our, you know. So, uh, luckily, about two or three days later, in South England, we were drove down to a place called Daredle Door. I set up the camera on a timer and made it look like it was a like a self timed photo. And I said, "Oh, it's going to be ready in three, two, one." And then I got down on my knees, pulled it out, and said, <laughs> "Will you marry me?" <laughs> and I think I said, "Like, are you serious?" I think you said, "Really?" Are you joking or something? Yeah. Because I still had in my mind that he didn't want to get married and he hated the idea. So I was just really confused for a second. But uh, it all turned out well, despite everything going wrong, <laughs> and um, that's the main thing. And what do you like most about each other? That I can talk about anything, really. Uh, talk about anything, it could be YouTube or geopolitical, <laughs> anything. <laughs> but like, it, it, yeah, we can talk about anything. Mm. Um, and I think that's the most important thing in mm. a relationship where you can talk like friends. Yeah, probably mine too as well. I think that's <laughs> it's a cop out, isn't well, it? Honestly, I did all the though, legwork on this one. Honestly, what else? What else do you like about me? What's well, so, I wrote you that book, didn't I? With like a hundred things. Go get your hundred things book. Thank you. Kina Tokoro. Hundred things 100 I like things about you. I like about you. Let's see. So handsome and wise. <laughs> you never complain that I don't want to eat meat, even though it's probably pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly though, oh, he's, he's really good. understanding. It's good though because I can eat your meat. If we go to a restaurant there yeah. and they serve you meat, I'd be like, I'll take care of that. I just pick all the it's meat brilliant. off of the dishes yeah, and great. give it to him. It's amazing. <laughs> you work harder than anyone I know. Don't know about that. Well, I guess I work quite hard. I don't think it's physically possible to work any harder than you do. Even though the videos come out like once every trillion years. It doesn't seem like you work hard. I'm always times. working on something. Yeah. How does this impact future plans of having a house full of cats? I'm happy with two cats. Yeah, more Tuna than has that, taught no. me that I don't want any more cats. <laughs> yeah, two, two's the max. What was it like going from friends to in a relationship? Did you find that things like jokes and teasing that you would have taken lightheartedly as friends changed in a romantic context? No, but I, what I did find it, I found it hard to wrap my head around it really, that I was dating like Charlotte in Japan. Uh, and I came across this video of a Canadian girl slowly but passionately eating some bread. And I saw that this groundbreaking act had been watched by over one million people. Although I could never have imagined that I'd become friends with the aforementioned bread girl. Uh, someone I'd known for six, seven years or whatever at that point. I'd never known someone that long as a friend and then dated them. Yeah. And so it was really weird wrapping my head around that. And, and you know, reconciling the person on the screen to the person in real life. Because there are subtle differences with Charla on and off camera. For example, off camera, she swears a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, that, that was that was a weird thing. I kept being like, this is odd. I'm dating yeah. Char in Japan. Did Chris fancy you from your bread video you did years ago? He mentioned it in a Why I Came to Japan video. Um, <laughs> I remember thinking, oh, he fancies her when I watched it. I think it's the opposite. I no, think he just thought I was a complete loser. I was annoyed how well that video did. Given like, <laughs> I'd like scripted, planned, meticulously shot like a video of, of something and Charles just like, mmm, oishi nihon shokupa, like, what delicious this bread. Jealous. Ten million views. It's like, god damn it, I hate the internet. <laughs> Is Chris secretly... It's not even good, that bread. It was shit. Are you done? It was, was it good? For white bread, it's amazing, yeah. Mm. The rest of the bread in Japan is shit, but like if you're comparing Canadian white bread with Japanese white bread, Japanese white bread is amazing. Well, Canadians can't do bread. No, but like just, you know, just a typical white bread that you get at a supermarket. Right, right, right. That was the point of that video. If you had properly watched it, you would have known that. Too busy but being you were annoyed. too busy being jealous. Too busy being envious of your <laughs> bread-based success. After watching the Journey Across Japan 1 video of you both in the park on an off day, ah, uh, I know which one, I thought there was something there. When did it click for you both? I wouldn't say that's when 
I was like, I want to date him. <laughs> um, well, I wasn't much fun on Journey Across Japan to be around, very cranky. given how burned out very, I was. Very, very cranky. Off camera and whatnot. <laughs> um, but clearly we got on really well um, on hmm. Journey Across Japan. And before then, all the years that we've done stuff together, we've always got on really well. Yeah, so. it was the first time that we had spent like nearly a month mm. traveling together yeah. and making videos. So it was kind of like a good test of our friendship. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I still, still enjoyed his company after <laughs> that. So yeah. yeah, I guess that... I don't know, that kind of led to me thinking like, oh, maybe we, we would make a good mm. couple. Because he was such an ass on that trip. He was in such a bad mood. But like, I didn't yeah. even care because I just knew he was really stressed. Yeah, it was a, a wild journey. I felt like if we could still be friends after that, that we'd probably make a good couple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair point. <laughs> Laura wonders if we will ever get matching tattoos. Oh, I don't think so. I don't know. I can't think of anything that we would both like. No, I do want to get a tattoo maybe one day, but I just don't know what or where it would it would fit in. But even then, I don't know why I would get some stupid proverb, probably some Japanese proverb. This is why really we bold. wouldn't get matching tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> I would get something proverb. that like symbolizes Chris. Like, I think like symbolizes our relationship, but I don't think I'd want a matching one. Family Mart chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like lyrics from like a song. That we listen to a lot or something. Uh, I would do that. But jump around by that, House of Pain. That's as far as I'm willing to go. Pack it up, pack it in. <laughs> Let me begin. <laughs> I came to win and to win the sin. Stop. Is Chris secretly a lovey-dovey kind of guy? What do you guys like to do when you have time for each other? I would say he's he's romantic, yeah. He's very romantic. How he so? goes out of his way to like plan really nice things to do together. Well, yeah. Trips and... On well, our trips to the UK, I, I put a lot of time and effort into where we're going and what we're doing. Right. It's not like, let's have a night out in Croydon. <laughs> I've tried to take it to all the good stuff. You know? Yeah. But that's why Charlotte likes the UK so much. I thought you were going to say that's why Charlotte likes me. <laughs> well, I know, probably that as well. But like, that's probably why you like the UK so much. Because I, I No, I like it because it's so different thing. from Japan. Or, or, I like the relaxed vibe of people right. in the UK. Well, let's take you to some special places take next to, time. Take me to Slough. But yeah, to answer your question, yeah, he's definitely very romantic. I feel like he puts a lot of effort into doing cute little things. Definitely. <laughs> Favourite pastime together? We watch films a lot, actually. Um, a lot. It's yeah. nice just to sit down and watch a film together. Um, unfortunately, mm. Charlotte only watches like horror movies, so we have to watch like the man. The we watched some weird movie fucking... yesterday that you wanted to watch. So what did we watch? Three thousand years of longing. Three thousand years of longing. That's pretty good. It's all right, but Charlotte's like, let's watch yeah. a Netflix documentary about a man that murdered all his family for no reason. And we have to sort of watch these annoying. It's intriguing to see what's going like, on in their minds. Billy seemed like a normal husband and father, yeah. and then he did well, something out of the norm. Well, it makes you like keep norm. your eyes out for these kind of people because he did look like a normal guy, and then he killed his whole freaking family. So. We watched like 20, 20 to, like, documentaries like that a day, people. and it's like I've lost my faith in humanity. <laughs> I never get sick of them. Netflix crime documentaries. <laughs> Mayudin asks, "What was it like meeting each other's families?" Did your families meet one another? Any cute culture shocks? Family hasn't met one another yet, given no. the huge distance, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, yeah, it was really cool meeting Charlotte's family. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, <laughs> Charlotte's parents are really nice, laid back people and very sort of hippie ish yeah. figures listening That's a good to. Good explanation. Sitting in rooms listening They're to. They're watching this. Be Jefferson nice. Airplane. <laughs> uh, <so laughs> Actually, I don't think I've heard your dad listen to Jefferson Airplane. <laughs> But yeah, they're really laid back, chill family, mm. and um, you got along really well. I don't well. know what I was expecting from your family, given that you're you quite scared? well, given that you're quite a sort of academically high achieving person. I thought it could be sort of like, oh, daughter needs to go uh, to be a lawyer, kind of right, scenario. Right. It's sure. like the opposite. She needs to be a doctor. It was it wasn't that case at all? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then your granddad, Hungarian legend <laughs> Julius. He he makes a. Uh, Wonderful Hungarian food whenever mm. we turn up. So, yeah, really cool family, really laid back and um, very down to earth. Mm. Easy to talk to. Yeah, Chris's family's the same. They're really <laughs> friendly. They're like super friendly. I feel like Chris's gran is probably my favorite. She's um, really sweet, but she can also be really bitchy, and I love that about her. <laughs> She's sassy. God, sassy. <laughs> She's very sassy. <laughs> I met his family like a couple months after we started dating, which was a bit scary. Mm because it was still really early on and I didn't know That's true. what to expect, but they were so welcoming and I could just be like, so nice. Go and watch the YouTube videos, she eats bread. She loves to eat Japanese bread. Look at this. She but yeah, it's been bread. really fun. And as for like culture shocks, I don't know, because yeah, it was my first time to England. Chris had been to Canada before, because he has family yeah, in Yeah, family in Vancouver. So 
probably no shocks there. England, yeah, there's all, oh, I can make a whole video on culture shocks of England. <laughs> probably the biggest one is that they have taps that are, one is cold and one is hot water. And then how are you supposed to mix them and wash your face? Nice you either get that. ice cold water or you get <laughs> boiling hot water. It makes no sense. You've got to have the British touch. That doesn't make any sense. Simone <laughs> says, what were your first impressions of each other when meeting for the first time? My what? Our first impressions of each other. So I guess at the Halloween party. Not overly great. <laughs> Shana was very like on the ball on At the phone. At the Halloween party? She was oh, like, yeah, I was vlogging. like a 1980s stock trader always on her phone. Like she was always like <laughs> looking at what was being tweeted, what was going on Instagram, what was going on Facebook, and very much like on the ball with things, right? Quite a good like networker and people person. I genuinely don't remember <laughs> what I thought of Chris the first time I met him. I was excited to meet him because I thought his videos were hilarious. So it was really cool to see him in person. I don't think I was expecting him to be there at the party. Um, so I was like, oh, it's that funny British guy. The funny British guy. So yeah, it was cool to meet him. But yeah, always, I remember always on her phone. That was my first thought. Katie says, what are the best and worst bits of living together? Um, Again, the socks. The socks, the trampoline. <laughs> um, but no, mostly good stuff. The best thing is like uh, just watching a film together in the evenings and um, yeah. having a nice dinner. So going for a walk at night, we like to walk around at night. Um, yeah, that's been nice. And that's really like the nicest bit of the day, especially in summertime mm. in Japan, it's kind of the right temperature where you can stroll at around at night in the not community, the yeah, not the daytime. <laughs> no, it's been good living together. I honestly can't think of any bad things about it. I can't even mm. think of one. Oh, he's snoring. He snores a lot. No, 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 no. If Nonsense. I ever look exhausted, it's because Nonsense. I don't sleep ever. No, 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 I don't think you'll find anyone that will say that I snore, especially Joey. Joey, back me up here. I'm fucking cat, snoring, I'm mate. Cat hair. Stop swearing. I don't want to say too much. Gonna get demonetized, mate. <laughs> A little bit of demonetization. Um. Oh, Katie also. <laughs> Katie also <laughs> asked, "Where will you go on a honeymoon? You've been everywhere in Japan." Uh, well, I don't think my honeymoon would be in Japan. No, that was that the last near. place I want it to be. I don't know. Maldives. Bit of a cliche. As lovely as it looks. Did Chris want, loves go a good there. beach. I don't I'm not a really. Beach person. I don't like a good beach that much. He loves hot weather, and I'm kind of the opposite. Um, so we we struggle a bit trying to find vacation local. Like I would much rather the rainy lake district to that. like Maldives. No, so I don't know. We'll have somewhere... to have a a happy middle. Could go somewhere cool like Thailand. Yeah, somewhere resort. new like that yeah. would be cool. Yeah, I don't. I've, as I've got older, my holidays have changed. It's I like to sit on a beach more because well, I, I, my life travel is traveling and doing yeah. stuff right so the idea kind of the sitting opposite. there and so it was nice in greece just basically sitting in a chair for a week reading books yeah. and that was sitting really damn pools. cool that's yeah. what we did so that was really nice yeah. doing that so yeah something like that would be good i think yeah, yeah i don't know where honestly mm. i have to think about it yeah i don't know a few people asking if we want kids uh, is there any possibility for you and chris to add any human siblings for maro and tuna probably not no, Neither probably not. Neither of us really like kids, so... I just feel like... I won't I, rule it out completely. I just but... uh, don't feel like I'm the right person for the job. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like you'd be a good dad if you had a kid. Uh, you might not be happy about it, but I, I, just I, think I know the way, you the way I have I, I handle having the cats, and I'm always, I, you know, I'm constantly like, oh, then getting in the way of my work kind of mm. thing. And I worry about that. I don't want to be, if I was going to have kids, I don't I don't want to be one of those dads who's like, I have to do mm. work now, fuck off children. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to, I wouldn't want that. And I think I'm quite an anxious person and I mm. feel like it would take my anxiety to new <laughs> spectacular hikes having a kid, right? That's true. Um, that would be scary. So I don't think I'd be a very good dad and uh, I don't think it would work for me. But the only way it would work is if someone like Sharla, aka wife, girlfriend, fiance, uh, one of the kids. Someone then, like Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this someone like Charlotte oh, replacement you're well, considering? I, I, well, like, let me rephrase. <laughs> if I wanted one, yeah, would sure, make it right. work. If Charlotte was like, I really want kids, then I'd be mm. like, okay, let's, let's, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I think that's the only time I would want a kid is if Chris said he really wants one, and then I'd be like, all right, we'll make it work. But I don't mm. really want one. I don't. I don't think we need to live in a world where everyone has to have a kid. I think yeah. it depends on the couple, the person. Yeah. Some people really want kids. Some don't. And I think I fall into the latter category. Mm. We've I, got a lot of responsibility with the two cats already. So, just the thought of adding more another person that you're responsible for on top of that is really daunting. Well, I've got friends that have kids, and I like to be like Uncle Chris. He just mm. turns up, buys him a chocolate bar. This is our son. 
This is all we need. <laughs> oh, he wants to give you a kiss. Everyone likes Chino, the fact that he'll come and greet you at the front door, no matter who you are. Yeah, he's really cute. Mm. As soon as somebody comes in the front door, he runs up to them and starts hugging them and purring. Yeah, he's lovely. You asked for it. Thoughts after your first kiss, like, oh no, this is a bad idea. <laughs> what have I done? No, um, not at all. It was more just surprise. It was like, wow, it's I've kissed Charlotte in Japan. <laughs> it's the ultimate subscription. It's the ultimate <laughs> collab. It's good. It was good. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, no, just I didn't shock think like this is a surprise. bad idea. It felt really weird to be mm. kissing your friend. I'll say that. Absolutely. Who had the nerve to ask out who first? I guess. I guess it was me, but I didn't like ask him out on a date, mm. so I wouldn't say it was like asking him out, but... We went to a really nice bar and um, I think we talked for like three or four hours over drinks and just mm. got on really well. And um, it was after that that, yeah, basically kissed and stuff happened there. Well, I can't say that. It's awful. When I was following the original Journey Across Japan, my wife, who doesn't otherwise watch the show, saw five minutes of the both of you biking across a bridge and said, he so loves her, they're definitely going to get married, and then walked out of the room. <laughs> what I need to know is, is my wife a legit fortune teller, or was it just so obvious that Chris was already crushing hard way back then? I feel like you always made like stupid jokes in your videos and people took it as you having a crush on me. Maybe. They didn't yeah. really understand they were sarcasm. I think it was, just, it was just good rapport, really. It just got on really well. And that reflected through the videos when you just get on with someone on screen. Like one of the videos, you called me your friend in quotations, and people thought that was because you considered me something more than a friend. Oh. But it's because he considered me like an Not enemy. A yeah, 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 it was the opposite. <laughs> people like totally took that Bank the wrong fired. way. Jesus. And stuff like that. But yeah, I guess your your wife is a legit fortune teller. <laughs> Impressive. My girlfriend made me subscribe just to ask this. <laughs> thank My you. Lord. Thank you, Andre. You're a you're a true a true partner. Um, <laughs> when did you start dating and how far did you go to hide the relationship in the videos? Um, we started dating in 2019, the beginning of 2019, so yeah. I, I don't know, I feel like we didn't have to try too hard, because Chris doesn't own any things, so I never had to like hide yeah, his true. things or anything. Mm. Honestly, <laughs> just didn't mention the relationship and that was the extent of it. True, true. At what point in the relationship did you know you wanted to propose? Well, I, I knew I wanted to get married years ago, but I still wanted to wait a bit longer and just make sure everything was great and awesome. And uh, yeah, so, but I basically decided in August last year that I was going to do it on the trip to the UK because I wanted to do it in the UK given we like traveling the Lake District and, and places like that together. So, yeah. I noticed that like every time we got out to go to like a nice location, Chris was like a little more bitchy than usual. And it was kind of weird because normally he wouldn't care about the rain that much. It just felt like God kicking <laughs> dust in my face. So I uh, guess he was like, yeah, I felt like sod's law, it. right? That the weather was just perpetually shite while we were in Lake District. But. Did you feel like it was a sign from the heavens that yeah, we shouldn't no. get engaged? Chuck the ring away, yeah. <laughs> no, I just felt like bad luck, really, yeah. But then yeah, it, it, I think it was good lucky. luck in hindsight because where we ended up doing it, yeah. the proposal, it was, was really, really beautiful and looks really nice in the photos. True. And, and I have a great memory of it, which is what I always wanted. I always wanted to be able to look back at the proposal and remember that moment mm. and the place we were. A, the photos from the way. Lake District were a bit crap, so yeah. I'm kind of glad those aren't the proposal photos. Yeah. <laughs> or, the, or the fossil hunting <laughs> in a river of just sewage <laughs> just washing down the beach, yeah. Oh, here's a good one. I've always wanted to know, is Chris a completely different person when the camera isn't rolling or is he pretty much the same? Some people are nothing like their public persona and I've always wondered that about Chris. I feel like in some ways he's the same, like his sense of humor is like identical to how he is on camera but I feel like he comes off as a real asshole on camera and he's not in person at all. He's like the opposite. He's too nice, if anything. Definitely. So I feel like that part is really different. Yeah, I mean, I, I always wanted to play more of a character or a caricature of myself on camera. In real life, I'm a lot more optimistic and nice, I yeah. think, than, uh, than, than who yeah. I portray. He watches be. a lot of British comedy and I think he takes inspiration from oh, that. Oh, for God, so. yeah, oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's a lot nicer in real life. Unfortunately. <laughs> Ashley wants to know if either of us had a crush way back when we first met each other. No. Not when I first met him, no. I think he hated me. I didn't hate you. The first time that I found him kind of attractive was when we were on a road trip together and he put 
music on in the car and he had really good music taste. Pendulum. And I was like, oh. It was Pendulum, okay. weirdly. Yeah. <laughs> like, Which I always found really odd. That's yeah. a cool song. It wasn't exactly romantic. It wasn't but... just that song though. I feel like all the songs you played on that trip were really good. And I was just kind of shocked because most people don't have the same taste in music as I do. Tarantula. Or a pendulum. Not yeah. tarantula, <laughs> it was witchcraft. Oh, oh. Yeah. such a random, <laughs> such a weird song choice. But it's so good, and like, good. I feel like so few people know that song. And just, yeah, just the rest of the music he played, so I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe he isn't so bad after all. <laughs> Do y'all have a song? Um, what, pendulum, apparently. <laughs> Is that our uh, song? We'll have to play it at the wedding. George Michael songs? George Michael, we like we like all the same music except he likes city pop and I don't. But other than that, <laughs> George Michael. The eight is Depeche Mode. Depeche you know, Mode, Smiths. Yeah, Smiths. Rolling Stones, Suede. Yeah. But do you like the Doors? I do like the Doors. Um, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I generally <laughs> like good overlap though. Thank God. Yeah. yeah, thank God. Road trips would suck if we didn't like the same <laughs> music. Honestly, what do people do? Just need to get you like one over to. Listening to city pop music boring. now. Boring. No. No. Repetitive and boring. Nonsense. Who said I love you first? That I, I actually don't remember. I don't know. Probably me. I think me. it was you. Definitely me. I'm better at opening up about things. <laughs> Shall I listen to half? <laughs> That's true. And I feel like I probably would have been Hey, I was one. the one that told you I liked you first. So That's easy. I feel though. like this is e Is that easy? Oh, no, it's I like not. You, but... If you've been dating for a while, surely <laughs> saying I love you is easier than going from friends to probably. dating. Probably. Don't know. What do you think, viewers? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Here's an interesting Jennifer one. Jennifer Best, that's a great name. <laughs> How did you deal with the distance when you lived in two different cities? Uh, bullet train. <laughs> I just went on the bullet train. It was only it? like 40 minutes, so yeah. it wasn't a long distance. Just always messaging each other, really. And yeah. uh, always, tra always traveling around doing stuff as well. So. I feel like we probably see each other the same amount now living together <laughs> that we do, that we did when yeah, we were sure. living in different cities, so. Yeah. I feel like as long as you trust each other, it won't be an issue to Absolutely. live in different areas. That's all you need, really. And it's good for Charlotte because she can sleep without my snoring. Well, yeah, so, genuinely. When it's time to <laughs> Oh, I'm curious about this. Was Chris ever jealous over the fact that viewers seemed to ship Sharla with any guy that was on her channel? No. no. <laughs> He's not a jealous guy. No. I didn't think he would be. Don't have to worry about Mark at all. <laughs> Mark, Mark's my best friend, and yeah, obviously Chris knows Mark. Mark knows yeah, Chris. Great guy. Yeah, great um, guy. No, I don't feel like that. No. He's not, not jealous of any of my friends. Since you both make videos, do you both give each other suggestions or tips, wanted or unwanted? Mm, always trying to help each other with titles, thumbnails, yeah. videos, filming, editing. That's one of the good things about dating someone mm. in a similar line of work, you know. Um, there's a lot of overlap, and that's actually been pretty good. Right. Yeah, we always like, what do you think of this title? What do you think of this yeah, thumbnail? Yeah. And we both have different experience. Our audiences are very different, so what mm. works on Chris's channel won't necessarily work on mine. But yeah, we are able to discuss everything and yeah, it helps a lot. Mm. What does a typical morning look like together? Well, being woken up by cats. Wakes so yeah, up Tuna morning. wakes me up at 5.30. Chris is beside me snoring, so <laughs> I get up groggily, make a smoothie. <laughs> groggily. Um, bitch about Chris snoring. <laughs> that's, that's a day in the that's life. About it. Yeah, it's a day in the life video. <laughs> it's our be nice, morning. It? What's a trait you find especially attractive about Chris and vice versa, other than the calves? Doesn't have to be based on physical appearance. One physical thing would be your eyes. He has really nice eyes. And non physical would be. Hmm. Especially attractive. Probably, some, yeah, his sense <laughs> of humor. Sense of humor. All right. That's easy. As for you, I don't like your hair and your face. You have a <laughs> premium face. It's a nice face, yeah. Thanks. But like, being able to talk about anything again, going back to that, just being able to chat about anything, can't under, understate how important that is. Mm. Mm. Oh. But premium face. <laughs> and nice hair. Stop it. <laughs> Thank you. I do like your hair when it's like this blonde. It's he likes cool, it very right? blonde. It looks really good with you, right? contrast. Of... It's nice, but it's hard to get it this color in Japan, so it ah. only happens when I've been overseas for a while. <laughs> Some guys have very strong opinions on women having tattoos, and Chris seems a bit conservative, like a 47-year-old no, no. brain in a 30-something body. <laughs> What's his opinion of your tattoos? Tolerant? And oh, no, I, think I think they're really cool. I'm all for it. Yeah. I mean, I just don't think, I don't know where tattoos fit onto me. Mm. I just don't think they suit me. 
I think I look great on Charlotte though, I th and I really like the the more recent snake tattoo Thank you. as well. Very cool. <laughs> oh, this <laughs> one. I'm man. glad you asked this, Ian. Have you ever seen Chris's episode of Robot Wars? <laughs> R.I.P. Killertron. Yeah, so I used to watch Robot Wars with my dad, like oh, religiously. I don't believe this. I you, don't like why that. didn't you ask my dad? Uh, I don't believe it. He doesn't believe me, but he never asked my dad. We used to watch it all the time, and Killertron was my favorite robot. No, it wasn't. So when I found out that was his dad's robot, I was genuinely creeped out like that's really creepy I to think that. that i probably saw him on tv well yeah you might have done on one yeah. of the episodes that's so creepy that's so weird i was in canada how old was i like 11 or 12 at the time you would have been there about 13 14 probably yeah watching you on tv in england lucky you and now we're getting married woo hey but where's the robot? That's so weird. Get the robot out and let's drive it around. Oh, I don't know. He's dismantled in a shed in the UK. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Show the cats the, <laughs> the robot. Yeah. That'd be funny. The pickaxe. <laughs> Which one of your Japan-based photographer friends will do the engagement photo shoot? I would choose Luke. Luke's Luke, amazing. Yeah, Luke's great. Luke Cray photography. Yeah, he mm. did a shoot uh, for us when we first started dating. And yeah, got some really nice photos of us. So, really nice photos. Yeah. yeah, he's a busy guy. But <laughs> I'd love to do another shoot with Luke. Yeah, legend. I think that's it. Yeah. There was a couple that were like duplicates of other things we asked, but hopefully we got most of your questions. Mm. Thanks for the questions, guys, and um, thanks for all the kind words and support yeah. as always. If you want to find my glasses, they're linked down below in the description box. Thank you, glassesusa.com. I'm off to solve a problem now. A math problem. <laughs> a math problem or a maths problem? Math problem. Maths problem. Math! Math! <laughs>